Today's vlog starts off with lunch. Then we'll get productive. I have two primary objectives today. The first is to change the oil in these cars. The second is to fix my drone. I got a phone call saying the part came in, which is amazing. I think that was overnight. Woohoo! It's on sale. Nope, I'm good. I am home and I've moved the cars into position. I like them on the asphalt because it doesn't show oil stains if I make a mistake as badly. Now, I'm gonna hop in the golf cart and get the other tools that I need, like ramps and stuff. Man, the top of the stable is like 25 degrees hotter. And I have to clean. That was from a while ago. I love my golf cart. Every job was a little easier and a little more fun. My wife wants to go grocery shopping. So for that reason, I'll do her car first so that she's not held up longer than she needs to be. With smaller cars, the ramps are really mandatory. With this SUV, it's really not. I, I could have probably fit under here. It's just more comfortable to have ramps than it is to squeeze by myself. Also, there's room for the camera and the tripod, which is good. So technically, you don't have to use new oil on the gasket here when, uh, when you put it on. But since I always have new oil at my disposal while changing the oil, I tend to use the new stuff instead of the used stuff. And now it should get a good seal. Don't forget to check where you just took this off to make sure that the rubber gasket from the last oil filter isn't there. Two rubber gaskets might sound good, but it's not good. It'll leak. All right, the oil plug is back in. The oil filter is on. Now it's time to fill it up. You don't need a funnel to fill it. Like you can pour it like carefully. And then once it gets right, just kind of duck this in. But a funnel really makes this foolproof. So I like that. And this is the last step. I don't know how many cars share the same thing, but do you see this maintenance light right there? That's for, it's a, it's a notification that the oil needs to be changed. And it's hard to film because it takes two hands, but the way that you reset it on this car is you hold the reset button for the odometer while you turn the key on. And it'll start blinking. And it'll go away. There, now it's reset. I don't know how other cars work, but this one's just on a mileage counter. So I think it's, 7,500 miles or 5,000 miles, one of those two, and it'll go on again. But for now, the light's off, and her oil's changed, and she's good to go. Next up, my truck. Text my wife. What do you want to say to Jackie Woodworth? The oil is changed. Your car is ready to go. Ready to send it? Send it. I'll send your message. Thanks, Siri. You know, she's a lot better than people give her credit for. Now I do the same thing again, but this time with my truck. It's pretty much the same procedure, even the same size socket, except it needs less oil because she drives an eight cylinder and I drive a six 
or she often likes to remind me her truck can beat up my truck. What a sad state of affairs. After I pull the oil filter and the bolt from the oil pan, you know, so it's draining, I like to let it sit for a bit because, you know, there can be those last few drops of oil you can get out there and I don't know, it just seems like the more dirty oil you get out, the better. So I'll use that time to do this again and lube up the uh, new oil filter. That should do it. You just don't want to put it on there dry. It's difficult to describe how tight to put the oil filter on. The whole universe seems to say things like tight enough but not too tight. What the hell? I will say this, when, you know, when you're turning it by hand, you have a pretty good mechanical advantage on it. You know, it's like you're dealing with a big bolt spinning around a smaller bolt. So put it on there. I guess until you can't easily turn it anymore. I mean, don't turn it as much as you can. Just until it stops getting easy. I'll admit this. I used to do it less than that. And like maybe twice in the last five years, they started leaking. You know, I didn't put them on tight enough. All I had to do was tighten it more. So now I go a little harder, even if it means they're a little more difficult to take off because you don't want it to leak. And there it is. Now I've got the oil changed in two cars. I've gotten to the point where if I have two cars to do, I can change the oil faster than I could take two cars to Jiffy Lube or whatever your local place is. It really doesn't take very long. With one car, that's probably not the, the case because there's efficiencies when you do two at once. But uh, yeah, it's a little cheaper, it's a little faster, and you know, I'm happier when I get outside doing things. If I'm inside all day in the dark, that's where sadness comes from. Sadness is bad, sadness is ugly. Oh yeah, one more thing. One time saver for me is having this big oil receiver receptacle thing. I don't know what it's called. Without it, you just go back and, you know, return it the same place you got it. But uh, with me, I just, you know, empty this probably every two years. I've never even emptied it yet. But it makes it so that I don't have to go back to AutoZone and take care of it every single time. All right, mission accomplished. Feels good, got stuff done. So we have a problem. I was kind of in denial about it and then I came back and took another look. I'm not 100% sure where these came from. Uh, do you see this metal shard? It came from one of the cars. Uh, there's a lot of small metal shards. Um, I changed the oil in both cars, and then when I poured the oil into here, I spotted it. Um, kind of denied it to myself for a little bit. It could have come from a bunch of places. The oil change before this, I literally did like all four lawnmowers and both cars. So it could have been in there from that change, but I don't think so. It could have just been picked up along the way. I mean, this thing was sitting out in the open and it had, you know those little crumbs that are on asphalt shingles? Uh, it had all those in there because it sat in the uh, stable like as we changed the roof. But I don't think so. This is exactly what it looks like when a dying motor sheds parts of a gear. Beyond that, Jackie's car has started to tick. It's not going to explode, is it? I don't think so. Um, and I just feel like if I don't admit that these things probably just came from Jackie's newly ticking motor, I'm kidding myself. And given that her car is, I guess, 12 years old with 225,000 miles, it might be finishing up. So we may have a new car in our future. One upside of changing your oil yourself is that you discover stuff like this as opposed to, you know, 
betting, getting surprised or just not having the real proof in the pudding or right in front of your face. Uh, this is, this is what we're dealing with. Your engine's not supposed to leave these things behind. So we just wrapped up with the propane company and this might be where I wrap up today's video. I don't know. You know, cause you can see how long the video is, but I don't know yet. Suburban, they came out, they got all our appliances running, I think. And um, we have a new contract negotiated with them that went really well. And then it's, we just like them. Uh, it's funny, they have a, a low rating on Google, but my experience with Suburban Propane has been great. They come out here, they, you know, we say our stove is clicking too much. They look at the stove, they look at it, they bleed the lines. They, it's like they maintain all our propane stuff, even in the house, where most like utility companies, they'll be like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, we end at the doorstep, we end at the curb. Uh, these guys, well, if they're experts, they'll come and they'll look at it and they'll try. So I just thought I'd do a shout out to Suburban because this seems like they treat us right. And uh, yeah, so I like that. I, I, we've got kind of a track record on here of calling out the bad ones for being bad and the good ones for being good. It seems fair to me. So anyway, thank you Suburban Propane. And oh, if this is the end of the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and do other fun stuff. So I hope that this video is well. My wife was like, hey, there's this really cool weather phenomenon outside with lightning. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's dark. Look at this. This is the most amazing thing. I'll have you know I'm walking barefoot through like a dog poopy yard. This is incredible. I've never seen this. You might want to do it in the garage. You want to do it in the garage, baby? Oh. <laughs> I meant you know, I'm down. No, don't let me talk you out of it. We're gonna die out here. <laughs> here, hold this. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Multi million dollar deals got a million dollar deal. When I was younger, I would wonder how a million dollars feel. And for real, it feel like I ain't even broke a seal. Cause when you drop hits, they want you to pick up the bill. Now my life is in Maryland, my heart is in Chicago. New York state of mind, but out LA, man, that's where I go. When I need to lay this shit down So much on my mind, that's the reason I'm spitting now Finally running the game and everybody tripping now But I can give it